Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. This is going to be an exciting episode because we are each going to talk about three of the biggest mistakes we see investors make, which means you're going to get six. Yes, folks, <laughs> three times two is six. Good at math. So how you doing, buddy? You crushed it, Mike. Well, I man. crushed it. Yes. When did I'm we learn ex- multiplications? Like fourth grade or something? <laughs> it's not that late anymore, my man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, yeah, I love doing this stuff because I think that this is, this one video sets people up to get better at real estate investing instantly. Instantly. Yeah. Day one, instantly they're better. Well, I will give you the honor as the guest was starting us off. So uh, I will have to think around you. So you get number one. What's, what's the <laughs> first mistake you see real estate investors make? This is, and here's the best part. This is both just off the top of our heads. Yeah. We didn't do any prep. Nope. This is purely top of our head. This is what mistakes that we've seen in helping our students and in what we're doing in the market. So I think the, the number one mistake that investors need to avoid right now is overpaying. Yeah. See video one and Zillow. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the biggest if, and they learned it on a grander scale. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I think, yeah. I think number one for me right now is investors have to be very careful not to overpay, not to have fear of missing out, not to be experiencing that FOMO, but have done the work, run your numbers, understand what a good and great deal is. And that should segue into you getting a good or great deal. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that is definitely one I see all the time. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I am non-emotional when I'm evaluating a real estate property. Yes, of course. Emotions are not involved at all. Now, if it's my primary residence, and I remember buying the place I'm in now going, well, it's where our daughter, want, we're going to have our daughter go to school from first to high school. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was reverse traffic, which is a big deal in the Valley for us to our jobs. Sure. So we, it was all, it was, it was all emotion. There was almost no numbers involved but i've never bought a rental property off anything other than the yield calculation it's not, it's, not it's, the same evaluation not to say not even close rental. yeah exactly and i see but i see a lot of investors use emotion and that usually means they get in bidding wars and they take a great deal and then they make it good and then they make it bad because mm-hmm. yeah so uh yeah overpay is number one yeah. the other one i i see a lot is um appreciation yep right yeah. i can't tell you how many people come to me and go, you know, where's appreciation in your calculation? Where is it? You you know, stuff's going to appreciate. Why don't you include it? Um, I I still, and I talk about it in my first book. That's fun to say my first book, because now I have two books. (laughs) That's, I never said that before. First show. That's fun. Break it. We're breaking Breaking things all over the place. That's that's cool. But I talk about it in my first book. Uh, Somebody in my organization who was uh, several layers above me, he was a VP and I was a director or something. Um, he said, Mike, I can buy six homes and I can carry the negative cash flow. <clears throat> and I remember, and he, he had this on a big whiteboard. And oh, by the way, if these six homes, they go up by 10%, I'm going to make blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and I'm like, you're going to have a thousand dollars negative cash. And you're okay with that, right? You're going to have to work at whatever company we were at. Every Monday that you work is going to have to be to pay those homes. How is that a good idea? But he was dead certain. Oh, uh, and I remember, and people in California, oh yeah, he lost, he lost yeah. them all. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And again, um, I see people in California do it all the time, right? Because we have a very up and down. We're not really a very, very much so. Nope. Um, uh, people in the Bay Area, I get asked all the time, should I buy in the Bay Area? What's going? I'm like, I can't, I can't make cash. But Michael, they go up, they go up a hundred grand a year like clockwork. I'm like, until they don't. Until they don't. Until they don't. And then they yeah. fall 500 grand. And how does that feel? Yeah. So yeah, don't, I, I, appreciation happens. 90% of my net worth is because of appreciation. Yep. Time in the market is better than timing the market. But I do not calculate appreciation. Ever. I don't even calculate mortgage pay down, right? I just want to know how much money goes in and how much money comes out. That's, that's right. how I live. That's right. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's my number one. That's how you spend. Like, yeah, I can't call someone up and go, hey, I'm gonna I, I had a, you know five thousand of mortgage paid out. Can I use some of that to buy groceries? It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Mm-mm. All number right, two? that's number two. What do you got? All right, number two is under inspect. Ooh, okay. Yep. You're not the lumberjack landlord yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not there yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've how many properties have you deals. done? Yeah, exactly. yeah, I've done fifty deals in the last I don't know few years, but yeah, it's you're not there yet, and you will get there when you can when you read as much as I've read and watch all the stuff that Mike's putting out there, all four thousand seven hundred and ninety three videos. When you watch all that, you'll that's figure. crazy. But again, the key is is that people under inspect. They're like, no, nah, let's just do a light inspection, and then they're surprised when. You know, so I, as a professional, I knew that one of the buildings I was buying had um, sewer stack issues, knew it, knew it based on talking to the tenants or like, yeah, we get more clogs than we, you know, we, we had a clog in the, I was like, gee, have you had a clog in the last year? And like four or five tenants in that building said, yes. I was like, there's a sewer stack issue. Mm -hmm. Now I know what that costs to fix. It's between 2,500 and 15,000. Oh, I can absorb that knowing going into the deal. And I had that in mind when I was negotiating that contract. That's what I had in mind. So right. if you are a real estate investor, the biggest mistake that you can make is assuming that you know what something is going to cost and trying to be the nice guy in the deal and just get the deal done mm. and not actually try and work with every item that comes up in that inspection. And three is having sewer lines, Mike. You got, got a bunch oh. of years in a row with oh. like, yeah. I think I, there was a time where I think I was six for eight, six Ooh. out of the eight purchases had sewer light and they were all out to the main, right? Oh man, not fun. That's something that I think too many people are like, oh, that inspection is a thousand bucks. Listen, if you're taking a flyer on the house, I get why you might not want to spend a grand. That thousand dollars, if you do it right, will save you at least five to 10 X if you're buying the house. Oh Yeah. That is one of the biggest opportunities that you have. And we call it, or I call it in the process, I call it, you know, biting at the apple. Yeah. You only get a couple bites at the apple. The first time is when you're making the offer. And the second time is your inspection. And every educated real estate agent and seller know that they know you're coming back for a bite. That's why they don't want to do anything on the front end. Yeah. And uh, for folks that want to, don't want to experience my pain, if you ever buy a house in California that's been vacant for a year and the water's been turned off, get a credit for the sewer line because yeah. trees seek water. They do. And uh, they will find that sewer line. And then when somebody finally turns it on, it will be great for about a month and then it won't. What's uh, in that vintage house that you're buying, Mike, what is that pipe mostly made of? Is it plastic? No, the ones that I bought were not. They clay. were clay. Yeah. Clay. They, they yeah. just popped. They do. So people need to understand that. Most people look at construction today and think that that's what's going in. They think, yeah. they're, green, they think they're getting green pipe in the ground. It's plastic can never be permeated. Oh. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> it more than likely is clay. What clay. jerk face came up with the idea that a clay pipe to carry water in the ground was a good idea is a moron. Yeah, but that, that was the standard yeah. for decades where oh. clay was going in the ground. And that stuff, it gets old, it gets brittle, it cracks. Once it dry, oh, it's God. permeable. It's yeah. permeable by these roots. It will get into there and it ends up creating something called uh, skirting on the inside of your pipe. Yeah, they just right? seek it. Yeah, yep. they, they want to survive too. So yeah, if you're in California, your house has been vacant a year and the water's been turned off. Yeah, get a credit for the sewer line because it's going to pop. Yep. So, yeah. That's my number two. Now, my number two is getting enamored with cheap. Yeah. How many investors have reached out to me and said something stupid like, I can buy a house for less than my car. <laughs> I have heard that statement or a version of that statement a thousand times. And your car is too expensive. <laughs> it, see, Mike's get your money right course. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> get your money right. Yeah. But. Uh, Cheap, you can go broke buying cheap. Yeah, for sure. Che che I che cheap is calling a real estate investment cheap is probably a red flag for me at this point. Yeah, right? I don't care what the price is. Right, I'll pay a million dollars. I've paid two million dollars for stuff, but it, it, it's because of the yield. Right, right. Don't buy so, cheap just because it's cheap doesn't. And it, if it's been, if it's cheap and it's been on the market for more than you know seven days, I have a hint for you. It's not cheap, right? All the us guys, we've all looked at it. Oh, we're dozens like, of times, right? Oh God, we're like, that's can I much. make that work? Can I make? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, yeah. It's just, so, it's, Mike, on a nice house in a nice neighborhood, and an identical house 
an hour and a half away in the boonies, same exact house. How much money does that roof cost to fix? The same amount. Yes. So if you're doing a $7,000 roof on a $40,000 house or a $7,000 roof on a $300,000 house, which was the better deal? Yeah. The $300,000 house. Because think about it. You just spent 30% of the value of your home on a roof. Yeah. And it's because the repairs aren't cheaper just because the house is cheaper. Yeah. You still have the same roofer, the same material. Same everything. Yeah. And oh, by the way, the rent out in the boonies is going to be lower. So let's just be clear, right? Yeah, it's it's. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, "I I got excited. I was on Bigger Pockets or YouTube or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, I found this house in X city in the Midwest. It's been on the market for sixty days or more. I'm going to pay list price. What? Just because it's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. If it's been on the market sixty days, I got a hint for you. You don't got to offer list. Um, it's yeah, I don't know what it, a lot of California investors, again, we, we have very high housing prices here and they see, they do the Google street view and, Oh, look at the neighborhood. Oh, I, I, I quiver every time I hear it's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, you can go broke with cheap. Yeah. Totally agree with you. All right. Number three. My number three is. I'd say my number three is probably uh, the next biggest mistake that I see new landlords and new investors making is they don't fully understand really what the rent should be in that unit. Mm. Okay. So they're looking at, they're comparing it to, well, this brand new building that hit the market is Mm. getting $2,800 for a three bedroom. Yeah. Or they underprice it. Or they underpriced. It's way. under or over. It's both ways. Yeah. More often, Mike, more often it's underpricing. It's yeah, that's what I've seen a lot lately. I'd say eight, I'd say it's probably 80, 20 underpricing versus overpricing. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that people just need, you need to have done your due diligence and the due diligence is no longer rental meter. That no, no that's so diligence. out. Again, maybe in a year it'll come back, but it is off. It is way off. You need to be doing the due diligence of talking to a couple drive through the city, see if you see any signs of agents that say, or, or, you know, they post their sign and it says for rent, mm-hmm. you walk it, you call them, you walk it, you see it, you touch it, you feel it. And then you find out what the rent is. Yeah. Usually a rental agent is far, if they're a real rental agent, they are far more in touch with what that unit should be renting for than you are. Yeah. or anything you're going to find the yeah. honestly the best source i've found for rent has been craigslist yeah because it's That's current it's like the most current it's the most current and it lets me see right away what my competition is mm. i put a unit out there in a town that had one mm-hmm. other rental available yeah i'm guessing you could stretch the price a little bit i stretched it a little bit if it gets rented, Mike, it's a 50% increase over what it rented for last year. Oh my god, that a lot of that cash flow falls to the bottom line. Yeah. So we're just gonna we're gonna give we're it gonna a, we're gonna give it a little, a little how do you do and yeah. see see what we come up with. Yeah. So my final one is actually step one of my course, and that is focus. Yeah. Too many new real estate investors are all over the map. Yeah. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then it's I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go there. Folks, real estate investing is a skill. Because it's a skill, it can be learned. How it is learned is by focus and daily discipline. Mm-hmm. You don't do this and do that, and then they do this, and then do that, and then go here, and then go there. Mm-hmm. It's 75, 90 days, tight buy box. Right. Look at it every day, document changes, understand average, and bingo, bango, you have the power. Yep. That is, that is, that's the thing I'm trying to fix. Along with that is I'm trying to build confidence. A lot of people yeah. don't have confidence because they're all over the map. Yep. I promise you, if you look at a tight buy box for 90 days in a row, you will confidently be able to declare what is an average deal. And once you know average, you can do good or great. Yep. Anybody could do an average deal. Anybody could do a bad deal. See Zillow, you got more money than brains. You can do a bad deal. They've done it. But yeah, if you want help, focus, buy the course below and I haven't said it on an interview yet, but I'll say it here. The course is going to be more expensive January 1st. I'm adding more stuff. Should be. Yeah. Buy it now before it goes up. Then you get everything for free. Mm-hmm. 
One of the things, Mike, that I think that really proves your point is, so I was watching my market, doing my work. Um, in uh, May, um, in, in uh, April, a deal came on the market. I liked the house. I liked the deal. It was a good, well, it was a, it was a good house, liked the location. It was solid. And I was like, but they came in overpriced. Yeah. And I was like, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to track it, track it, keep an eye on it, watch it. That house went on for 289. It ended up selling for 305. And I was like, okay, that person is an idiot. They made a mistake. Yeah. They can't do math. Mm -hmm. That was the end of May that it closed on, on November 1st, yesterday, that house came back on the market for 336. Oh my goodness. That is an investor that clearly made a mistake. And the yeah. question is, is that they are going to be chasing that thing down because it's not worth 336 now, just like it wasn't worth 305 when they bought it for that in May. Yeah. So they're going to be chasing it. Enjoy yeah. that ride. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Those are six mistakes. Uh, a lot of fun. Great conversations today. We talked about oh, the sorry. worst flipper ever and how they could save themselves. That was a genius interview. Thank you. Uh, we talked about um, the great real estate slowdown and, and mm -hmm. here you go. Six mistakes. So Matt, how can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and 11.30 a.m. Uh, go live live stream that we do 11.30 a.m. every Sunday Eastern time after one rental at a time's daily financial news. Mm. There you go, buddy. Thank you very much. Enjoy your week. Thanks, Mike. You too. Mm -hmm. Thanks.